Ja sam Aleksandra Ilić, igram u ŽFK Crvenoj zvijezdi, igram na poziciji veznog igrača i imam 16 godina. Pa ja volim sport, volim futbol i u tome najviše i uživam. Od malena moja omiljena igračka je bila lopta, pa je tako se tu negdje i rodila ta motivacija. Vidioši da čak i kako igraju u futbol u parku, ja sam počela s njim. Prepreke uvek postoje u karijeri i u tom nekom razvojnom putu. Smatram da je najveća prepreka za mene bila to odvajanje od kuće kada sam trebala da dođem u Crvenu zvijezdu. Pošto jednostavno porodica je moja najveća podrška i jednostavno bez toga ne uspevam. Pa svakako za mene je velika čast da sam dobila priliku da igram u svom prvom timu i naravno povjerila sam da tu šansu iskoristim. Pa ja smatram da su to upornost, posvećenost i trud. Maksimalno zalaganje na svakom treningu, na svakoj utaknici. Pa ja smatram da kapitan treba da ima tu jednu određenu dozu odgovornosti i pre svega da stekne poverenje ostalih igračica iz tima. Ja smatram da jeste negativno uticala jer samim zatvaranjem i karantinima ekipa se odvaja što smatram da za timski sport nikako nije dobro. Pa smatram da treba da budu istrajni u tome što rade, posvećeni i da se trude i naravno da uživaju u sportu. Smatram da sport promoviše jedan zdrav način života koji je naravno potreban svima i naravno tu ljubav prema sportu da jednostavno pokažu i ostalima da treba da se bave sport. Ja sam Luka Zarić, igram za selekciju mlađih kadeta Crvene zvezde, imam 15 godina. Motivaciju da započnem karijeru u oblasti sporta dobio sam od svog oca. Prvi dodir sa loptom je bio sa teniskom lopticom zato što je moj tata držao teniske terene. Pored teniskih terena su bili futbalski tereni i kroz ogradu sam uvek gledao kroz ogleda sam uvijek gledao kako djeca igraju futbol i to mi je dalo želju da i ja krenem trenirati na futbol. Glavna prepreka je bila to što sam morao da dolazim svaki petak u Beograd zato što sam iz Užica i to je bilo veliko odricanje za moju porodicu i za mene. Prilike koje mi je pružila futbolski klub Crvena zvezda jesu razne iskustva na turnirima i utaknicama širom sveta. Mlada osoba pre svega treba da ima upornost i veliku želju da bi uspjela u sport koji želi i da nikad ne odustaje od njega. Karakteristike koje su potrebne su da budeš primjer svojim saigračima i na terenu i van njega. Ja mislim da jeste zato što smo tada bili zatvoreni u kući i nismo mogli da treniramo i da igramo utakmice samim tim i napredujemo. Poruka za mlade sportiste je pre svega da vole sport, da uživaju u njemu i da se što više trude oko sporta i da će uspjeti u njemu. Najveća motivacija je ljubav prema sportu i trebalo bi da imaju uzora i da imaju neki cilj.
My sports career uh, started quite simple. Uh, in my 14 years old, I set up a mini football club because uh, in that time I played football, but I wanted to play also with my friends from school. But unfortunately, we've been uh, or we had a different kind of performance and it was impossible to play in the same football club. So for this reason, we started with an amateur club mini football, six aside, where actually we've been able to play together without any problems, without any focus on our performance, just for fun. And it created a new friendships. After we arrived that we would like to have more clubs. So we tried to find uh, uh, new children or uh, new friends in that time who can join us who can set up the club in the district or potentially in the city. Uh, we made a success after we develop an uh, association at the national level. Uh, we focus uh, on a different kind of local organizers through internet. In that time it was a little bit complicated because not all of them, they had a website. Uh, I'm talking about the year 99, 2000, 2001. And uh, we also made a success and we set up in 2004 uh, the organization, National Mini Football Association in Czech Republic, with uh, eight mini football local organizers. And after we realized that we would like also to play uh, international games, to have a selection of best players in uh, our organization, to have a national team. So we uh, again went back to the internet and uh, Google for new organization that uh, we don't know them and that can potentially share the same idea for us. We find them and first uh, was a European Championship that uh, we organized for seven countries. And now you see we have a World Cup with 32 countries, but of course we have more members than 32. And what was actually uh, my motivation? My motivation was to share my free time with uh, friends, even as I mentioned already, that uh, we had a different kind of performance. So mini football gave me this opportunity and definitely I believe that uh, mini football and our organization from that time till now positively contributes to a community in the local level but also at the national and international level. How to motivate uh, young uh, people to play a sport or to make a sport? Uh, definitely it needs to come firstly from parents. If parents are not able, after it needs to come from teacher. If teacher is not come, it needs to come from friends or it needs to come from, from uh, their new love, uh, from new partner. And uh, because this is actually the motivation. They want to share the time with uh, friends or potentially with some authorities. What means if they see some successful basketball player or mini football player, they want to be like, uh, like him. And this is the motivation. And uh, if um, child will find the right community, right people, and will have a strong will, definitely he will meet a success and he will be, a, he will, uh, be involved in the sport. So this is my recommendation. If you are not supported by your parents, Focus on uh, your friends, who you think that is the best uh, authority for you and uh, to follow because uh, authorities are bringing new sport, uh, new sport athletes and uh, not opposite. If somebody would like me to position a uh, sport athlete, even professional sport athlete, um, it's quite a difficult way because uh, you have a different kind of challenges. First challenge is your parents. How your parents uh, is uh, focusing on your movement, how they uh, support you to make a sport or other activities that you would like to do. If you don't have uh, support from parents, definitely you can get the support from a teacher in the school. This is the second uh, instant, instantion. If you don't have uh, support from parents and you don't have uh, support from uh, teachers, you have uh, also still opportunity to get a support from your friends. It means motivation from your friends. If some of your friend is uh, playing uh, basketball and you would like to join him, maybe you never played, but you would like to spend common time with him, you go and you join him. Same is with mini football. And uh, if you didn't meet 
support from parents, you didn't need support from a teacher, you didn't need support from uh, your friends. Uh, potentially it could be love. And I'm not talking about the uh, about a partner only. I'm talking also about the children. Children, your children could be motivation to uh, focus on uh, sport even in uh, your higher age to start the sport. Even you played before just as amateur and maybe to meet uh, at least a semi-profi career that you can do. Uh, what's actually our characteristic that uh, head of uh, sports organization needs? Definitely, uh, according to me, the best is that uh, you focus on one organization and uh, you have a one targets because uh, if you are sitting on uh, more seats and focusing on different kind of problems, you have a lot of things that you need to manage. And definitely a head of organization needs to be a very good manager. He needs to get, a, he needs to make a good, ad, good advices, good decisions. And for all of this, you need to be sure that uh, your focus, if you want to work on professional level, is only on one organization or one company. What are the main obstacles uh, for uh, me in uh, sports era in the development of mini football? Uh, if you are um, involved in uh, international body, sports body, but not only in sports body, but uh, in the, any international organization or company, and you are working with different kind of nations, you need to be ready that uh, people have uh, different kind of. Uh, habits, different kind of uh, religion and different kind of uh, point of view on different kind of issues, different kind of problems. And uh, the biggest challenge for me was to unify these uh, habits, unify these uh, people that have a different kind of uh, point of view on different kind of problems, issues. And uh, this is, uh, according to me, biggest challenge. Uh, in case of a uh, what uh, are the say, opportunities uh, that have been given to our club or families? Uh, definitely, uh, I see a exchange of experience, exchange of ideas. And uh, also, if uh, you are working with a different kind of people, I mean, from different kind of uh, countries, organizations, Definitely, they have a uh, different kind of experiences, and they maybe solve it better than uh, than me. And this is also very important to be able to listen to the others and to accept that they have a better idea and to manage these better ideas correctly and successfully for the organization. COVID nineteen definitely influence uh, sport and a uh, number of athletes. Uh, firstly, definitely it was uh, e-sport games where we can see that uh, a lot of people started to uh, sit in front of the computer and uh, uh, actually through e-games uh, have been in touch with, uh, with the friends or potentially with the new friendships that came through these uh, e-games. Uh, what I've been surprised that uh, also organization, uh, sports organization with statutes there is written that they will support to bring athletes to the field and to to make a physical activities. They promoted e-sport games, and this is going against the statutes. I understand that you have different kind of contribution uh, from e-sport games, like to um, learn English or to get a different kind of thinking. But still, if I measure of uh, uh, what is better and if I combine, I uh, I'm very strictly against. Uh, this e-sport games because it's really has uh, it's negatively influence the people that are coming and make physical activities and make a sport. Uh, what I saw in person was that uh, in a primary school, if I'm talking about the first, second, third class of primary school, I see that most of the people or most of the pupils, they actually even don't want to go to physical activity hour. And for this reason, we started a project with a uh, sports faculty in the city of Brno, in the Czech Republic, uh, where actually we are bringing uh, different kind of uh, coaches, trainers, uh, animators of uh, uh, uh, animators of uh, physical activities, 
and uh, also from uh, our staff we are bringing these people to a uh, school to uh, physical activity hour and we are motivating thanks to these people pupils to start and to make a sport and uh, what is the reason because you see that if parents are not able to motivate children to the sport second instruction is a teacher a teacher in a first class in primary school is uh, his teacher for everything he's teaching mathematics he's teaching uh, writing he's teaching national language he's teaching also physical activity and uh, if teacher is not so connected with the physical activities uh, mostly it's like this that uh, actually pupils are not motivated they are missing motivating motivation factors and for this reason we started this project and I must say that it's a very successful project of course we are not able to convince all children to make a sport but definitely we are able to bring more um, uh, pupils to the sports and this is what I see in our statistics Hello, my name is Dan Jordanovski and I've been a fan of football since I was like six years old. Uh, well done now. Uh, what was you, your motivation to start your career in sport? How did it all start? Well, I started playing football uh, when I was, like I said, six years old and I learned it from my friends. And also I followed other football stars like Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi and some other football players. players. Well done. Okay, well, uh, what were the main obstacles for your personality and what were the opportunities given to by to to you by by your club well i haven't uh, got any obstacles in my career except for maybe when i go uh, on vacation with my family in malta but i still i still jog there so i don't have any obstacles personally okay okay well now i'm impressed well done what are the main traits of characteristic that a young person should have uh, in order to build a solid sports career as a player? Well, every young person should go to, the, to training regularly. They should have a good trainer. They should have an educated trainer. They should be consistent in training. But you don't even need that because there are many popular players like Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi that didn't have good stadiums. But they still had a very good career in football. Okay. What do you think and what is characteristic are needed to be a leader in a sports club? Well, to be a leader, you have uh, to be a good football player, you know, you have to be consistent, but you have to lead your team, you have to be a leader, you have to be, you have to support your team and... You have to play fair play as well? As yeah, well? yeah, yeah. Well done. Uh, do you believe the uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, influenced negatively the participation in sports? Well, yeah, COVID-19 has influenced a lot of stadiums and sports organizations, but you can still train at home. For example, you can do push-ups, you can even do online training with your trainers, as I did like two years ago. And yeah, you don't, you, even though there is a pandemic, you can still train. You can do push-ups, like I said, sit-ups and other things. Well done. What is your message for your for a young sports person? You know, these kids are here uh, or from seven age or six age the our young academy what is your message for them well my message for them is even if, if even if they start old they can still be a professional footballer because there are many uh, professional uh, football players uh, that become that are that started football at, the, at an old age for example um, the football player kaka started at like 16 years old um, and he became a professional football player. Do, so, you, do you think that, that every young person has to join the to do any sports? Or? Well, yeah, sport is a very uh, sport is a very good uh, thing for young boys and girls to do. It improves their muscles. It improves. Uh, it builds uh, brain cells in their brain, and it's it stimulates them. It, they, it doesn't uh, let them sit on their phone. Well done now. Thank you very much now. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Antonio Ramos and Mr. Daniel Branquilla. I would like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind, about your professional career, your goals and conquests in the field of sports, some hydrances you might have faced along the way, and which parts were involved in your path.
Shall we start? What made you so fond of football? And what were the initial goals and motivations that made you want to go down this path? The taste for football came from my childhood. When I was a teenager, life was very, quite different from today. There was no television, there were no computers, but there was a ball to have fun with. Meanwhile, we spent almost all of our free time playing football in the street or wherever there was a space to do so. Over time, I was federated and went through all the training levels of the club in my hometown, in the small town of Tour de Mugor. When I reached senior age, I was still a professional footballer in the secondary divisions of the Portuguese championships. At a certain point, I decided to study when I ended up with a degree in physical education through teaching. Nowadays, I'm a teacher in the field of sport, of course, and also I have a UEFA Pro coach qualification. That's why I applied for the post I hold today at the Bragança Football Association. In terms of obstacles and opportunities along your way, which ones do you consider to be the most relevant and which parts were involved in it? Regarding obstacles, I must mention that people are not receptive to changes. When we are young, we go over to our jobs full of dreams and full of hopes to make a difference, but people are very skeptical when someone presents innovative ideas. Regarding opportunities, we must always take advantage of doing what you like the most. Always take advantage of that, regardless of whether or not we get paid. If we do that, we will, we will never work a day on our life. And that's the dream. Soft and hard skills do you find most useful in order to enroll in a sports organization? Speaking of skills, there are two that are irreplaceable. One of that is the experience in sports involvement. The second is proactivity. Anyone who had played any type of role in sports along the years is better qualified to exercise any position inside any sports organization. We gain sensibility to people because of our past and to make better decisions we have to be proactive for them. In your opinion, how did the pandemic affect low social classes in terms of their connection with sports? In my opinion, all of the members that love sports were affected, especially the lower social classes. The big clubs and academies have facilities to continue their modalities, but the lower social classes lost opportunities to participate, to watch or to hear any sports events for almost two years. The older people couldn't make, couldn't make the, the tradition to watch any football game at Sunday afternoon. The fathers couldn't run with their kids um, on the street. They couldn't go to practice because every club and association were closed. And the younger kids lost the touch with sports because in schools there was no physical education classes. So the human being is made of tradition of habits and experience, and that's exactly what COVID affected. As a spokesperson for sports, how would you advise younger individuals and how can they thrive in this field and pave the way for the creation of a better society while dealing with the challenges brought by the surrounding environment? The advice I give to young people is that they do everything for fun, with commitment and dedication. Absolutely sure that if they do, they will achieve their goals. Simultaneously, having well-defined objectives, adequate projects according to the size of the club, of course, and following an innovative strategy in the desired development. Futbol eğitimiyle ilgili bazı sorularınız olacak. Tamam. Genç arkadaşlarla çalışıyorsunuz. Hı hı. Genç arkadaşlarla çalışırken onların futbol eğitimini seçmelerinde en önemli motivasyon kaynakları ne olduğunu düşünüyorsunuz. Valla en şey TV, televizyon yani sosyal medya oyuncuların yüksek rakamlar kazanması özellikle e, spor anlamında normalde başka branşlar da var ama Büyük bir ihtimalle parasal diyoruz. Tabii, yani ben işin gerçeğini söyleyeyim. Televizyondaki reklam, sosyal medyadaki reklam. Evet. 
Bir başka sorumuz bunun ekonomik boyutuyla ilgili. Hı hı. Siz spor eğitimini gerçekleştirirken, gençleri eğitirken karşılaştığınız en önemli ekonomik engeller neler? Ola en büyük ekonomik engel velilerin çalışması. İki velinin de e, özellikle okul ve futbolu bir arada götürmeye çalıştıkları için servis işte veya işte malzeme sıkıntısı, trampol sıkıntısı, işte üst baş giyim sıkıntısı bunlar bizi etkiliyor. Yani sahaya geliş problemi oluyor. İşte servise biniş çık şeyleri e, bazen mesela bizim belediyede servisimiz yetmiyor. Çocuğu getiremiyoruz. Bunları ihtiyaç etmek zorunda kalıyor. Yani maddi çok etkiliyor. E, futbol çünkü pahalı bir spor. Tam bu noktada bir başka soru soracağım. Sporun paydaşları var. İşte sizin kulübünüz var. Sizin aileler var. Veliler var. Öğrencilerin veliler var. Eğitim verdiğiniz gençlerin velileri var. E, toplumun diğer aktörler var. Futbol eğitimine bunların katkısı nasıl? Futbolu, bana dediğim gibi biraz önce okul ve futbol ülkemizde olmuyor. Yani e, anne babalar ya okuyacaksın ya futbolcu olacaksın düşüncesinde olduğu için ikisi bir ülkemizde ne yazık ki olmuyor. Ama yurt dışına baktığımız zaman işte Almanya'sı, Hollanda'sı, işte futbolcu olan, profesyonel futbolcu, avukat olmuş, doktor olmuş. Bizim ülkemizde ne yazık ki hem maddi sıkıntılar diyeyim hem de işte e, çevrenin işte senden olma çocuğa baskı ya psikolojik baskı da var bunun içerisinde. Uzun dönemli bir eğitim gerektirmesi. Tabii. Yani etkili midir? Et, etkili ama Haley, çocuğa Haley, psikolojik de çok baskı. Haley. Yani mesela okul okuyor senden olma futbol Haley. topa vuramıyorsun ya senden futbolcu olmaz ya senden sporcu olmaz. Yani kişisel çevre şeyi çok etkiliyor futbolu. Sayın Hocam bildiğiniz gibi iki sene önce e, büyük bir pandemi yaşadık. Covid-19 pandemiyi yaşadık. Bu pandemi sürecinin futbol eğitimine gençlerin katılımını etkiledi, olumsuz etkilediğini düşünüyor musunuz? Tabii ki düşünüyoruz. Tam iki sene boyunca çocuklarımız evlerde hapse oldular. Biz o yaş çocuğumuz 2008, 2009, 2007 grubu e, ne yazık ki yani yaş grubu olarak bütün Türkiye için söylüyorum. O yaş grubu özellikle iki sene boyunca ne idman yapabildiler ve resmi maç oynayabildiler. Tamamen gerilediler. Yani iki sene önce bizimle çalışan çocuk iki sene sonra bize geldiğinde inanın bana ayak çıkması beceremiyor. Çünkü evde kapana kapana çocuklar yani hem şeyden spor da yapamadıklar için işte bu evde pandemide evdeki yani spor deriz biz. Ev, ev, evde yapılabilecek sporları ne yazık ki gençlerimize öğretmediğimiz için evde de spor yapamadılar. Evin içerisinde olabilecek spor faaliyetleri var çünkü. Küçük ay ayak hareketleridir. İşte mekikler şınavdır gibi. Onlar da yapmışlar. Benim bir kiloya almış gelmiş. <gülüyor> evet, bir öğrencinin, bir gencin spor, futbol eğitimi almasına ekonomik olarak e, fakir olması, yoksul ailelerden gelmesi engel midir? Ee, gitti veya ilgilendiği çevre önemli. Mesela bizde de önemli değil. Çünkü biz genellikle yani durumu kötü dediğimiz ailelerden iyi topçular çıkartıyoruz, futbolcular çıkartıyoruz. Bu her ilde veya ülkede de aynıdır büyük bir ihtimalle. Hani biz maddiyat durumuna bakmıyoruz aslında. Zengin kişi illa çok iyi futbolcu olamaz. Biz genel bakmıyoruz ama bence yetenek. olmaması gerekiyor. Bizim için yetenek önemli ama etkilediğini düşünmüyorum. Öyle düşünen arkadaşlar da ben bütün dünya genelinde söyleyeyim. Olduğunda düşünmüyorum. Çünkü bu, biz bu işten ekmek yiyoruz. Bu işten reklam yapıyoruz. Bir şampiyon olunca o çocuk sayesinde şampiyon olacak. Şimdi gidip zengin hiç futbol oynamayan adam sayesinde söylersem e ben başarısız olacağım. Evet. Ben yetenekli adamla çıkarım. Evet, yani. Yani. yani o yüzden ben etkilediğini fazla düşünmüyorum. Yetenek sadece şu konuda durumu kötü olan aile çocuğunu çalıştırıyor. Nasıl, Ona değil, değil. nasıl desteklenebilir bu ailelerin çocukları? Futbol eğitimine daha fazla yüz göstersin. Onu e, kulüpler olarak ben kulüplerin ekonomik durumları da kötü. Devletimizin yani devletlerin e, bu işe el atması. Yetenekli çocukları tespit edip sadece futbol ama değil. Basket olur, voleybol olur, işte güreş olur, ne olur bilmem. İşte eski yatılı okullar vardı bilirsiniz. Bir merkezde toplarsınız işte eski güreş eğitim merkezleri vardı. Bu onu spor merkezi haline getirip çocukları toplarsınız, yemesini, içmesini, hocasını belirlersiniz devlet olarak. Bence mükemmel bir iş çıkar. Bence her sporda Türkiye olarak biz başarılı oluruz. Son olarak gençlere 
futbol eğitimle ilgili olmaları bakımından tavsiyeleriniz nedir? Valla ilgili olmaları için ben planlı olmalarını tavsiye ediyorum. Çünkü ben küçük yaş kurban var. 11 ayı 13'e bakıyorum. Ya şimdi biraz onu da uyardık. İşte okuldaki okul etkiliyor. Ders notları, yemeleri, içmeleri, uyumalarına kadar her şeylerine dikkat etmeleri gerekiyor ki burada konsantre olsun. Yoksa işte akılları işte anne baba kavga etmiştir, işte kardeşiyle kavga etmiştir, işte oradan trampon alınmamıştır, morali bozukturduk falan bundan çok etkiliyor. Ama hani biz olabildiğince yani bu işten zevk alamalarını istiyoruz. Kazanmak bizde ikinci planda. Kazanmayalım önemli değil diyoruz. Hani hep, hepsinin futbolcu olacağını da iddia etmiyorum. Ben hepsine diyorum ki aylaklı insanlar olun. E, toplumumuza, ülkemize faydalı olun. Ama hani inşallah çıkar bir tane iki tane futbolcuyum biz de sevinelim. Ama hani motivasyon bence psikolojik olmuyor. O çocuğu ilk önce böyle topluma faydalı bir insan olması yönlü olmalı. İlla futbolcu ol. Sen şunu ol, bunu ol oğlum. Sen oral olsun Messi denmemeli bence. Ee, i̇lk önce yani topluma faydalı olmalı. Uğurcan söyledim Ataş. Ee, Serik Belli Spor'da A takımın antrenmanları çıkıyorum. O 18 takımda da A takımıyla bu sezon e, maçlara çıkacağım. Evet güzel. Ee, başarılar inşallah. Teşekkür ederim. Evet Uğurcan, e, kariyerinde bu spora başlamada seni motive eden neydi? Ben e, bu spora... Veya bu masal, bu e, şey nasıl başladı? Futbol aşkı nasıl başladı? Evet, çok güzel. E, i̇lk kez 7 yaşındayken e, bir futbol oyunu oynarken, evet. hani konsollarda... E, Fernando Mustera'ya çok aşık olmuştum. <gülüyor> Kendim bir Galatasaray'dım aynı zamanda. Evet. O andan itibaren kaleci olma hevesim başlamıştı. E, bu bir hevesimi babama bildikten sonra da Beni ilk olarak serikli bir futbol okuluna yazdırmıştı. Evet. İlk olarak futbol hayatım orada başladı, 10 yaşındayken. Oradan sonra da e, Serik Belli Espor'un altyapısına bu Covid döneminin hemen başlangıcına bir geçiş yaptım. E, Altyapı hocalarım Necmettin Çimen'le ilk başta e, özel antrenmanlar aldım. Bu antrenmanlar sayesinde çok büyük seviye atladım ve e, Serik Spor'umuzda bu 16'da maçlara çıkmaya başladım. Evet, çok güzel, çok güzel. Ee... Bu ekonomik e, olarak e, söz konusu olduğunda Covid-19 e, döneminde e, sana spora katılımını olumsuz etkilediğine inanıyor musun Covid-19'un? Ah, Covid-19... Yani evlere mahkum olduk biliyorsun. Evet, ha. evet. Yani o... Sen spor yapmana engel oldu mu? Yok, kesinlikle olmadı. Ben evde bir e, hazırlık zamanı bulmuş oldum. Evet. Daha iyi hazırlayayım kendimi, öyle söyleyeyim. Evet, burada gördüğüm kadarıyla yaş grubu olarak e, senden e, daha küçükler var. Evet. Bunlara mesajın nedir? Onlara Veya mesajım... Senin bundan sonraki hedefin nedir? Hayallerin nedir? Hayalim e, hani kendimi daha çok gösterip e, daha güzel kulüpleri belki de daha ileride e, daha büyük liglerde oynayabilmek. E, küçüklerime buradan vermek istediğim hani bir yönleri çok çalışsınlar. Kesinlikle e, hiçbir şekilde hayallerinden vazgeçmesinler. E, yetenekliyiz. Çok çalışma onları İstekleri yere getirecektir. Evet. Evet. Evet. Hazır. Evet, futbol kariyerine başlamanın motivasyonumuz neydi? Öncelikle futbol olan sevgim, e, iştahım, e, idol olduğu öğrendiğim oyuncuların e, kendimi onlara idol edinmek. Evet, teşekkür ederiz. Rica ederim. E, Genç sporculara mesajınız neydi? Sizce onların hem spor yapmaya hem de topluma katkıda bulunmaya en çok ne motive ederim? Şimdi spor beden sağlığı için çok önemli bir e, çalışma gerektiren bir durum. Disiplinli, karakterli, ahlaklı olup takım halinde de performans sergilediği sürece e, başarılı olacaklar. Ama çok çalışmak bunun birinci nedeni yani. Evet. Gençlere futbol öneriyor musunuz? Ya biz gençlere futbol, futbolcu antrenörüz ama spor öneriyoruz. Beden ve ruh sağlığı açısından çok önemli. Tabii ki futbolda zaten günümüzün en revaş spor ve futbolu tabii ki öneriyoruz. Genç bir oyuncu futbolcu kariyerini yönetmek için hangi özelliklere sahip olmalı? Bir kere kesinlikle uykusuna, yemesine, içmesine, disiplinli olmasına da çalışmasına dikkat etmesi gerekiyor. Algıda seçicilik çok önemli bu işte. Sözün özü çok çalışması gerekiyor. Hello everyone. Hi, I'm Tamara Petrovic and together with my colleagues from Red Star Football Club and members of other project partners created this project, Amchamp. Let's say one year and a half ago, 
So the initiative started at the end of 2021 and a year later we were so lucky to start implementation of, of this project. So in December 2022, the implementation actively started and uh, the initial meeting was held with, uh, with all the partners. And in March 2023, the first transnational project meeting was held uh, at the premises of uh, the Red Star Football Club Stadium, um, previously called uh, Maracana. Now it's called uh, Rajkomitic Stadium. And we were lucky to host our partners from Turkey, from North Macedonia, uh, from Portugal and from Czech Republic. So the purpose of this project is uh, to deal with the creation of mechanisms for young uh, athletes to um, develop their, their talents and have a successful career in uh, sports. But since uh, we're having mostly football clubs uh, within this consortium, we are kind of focusing uh, particularly on uh, football. The initiative started uh, as the Red Star Football Club has its own uh, youth section and academy within uh, the club that uh, implements some useful and practical uh, methods in supporting the young talents, especially those who are not in the position, economical position, uh, to pursue uh, their career since uh, there are many, many different uh, costs uh, bound uh, when it comes to the developmental path of uh, young athletes, that is, uh, football players. So final outputs of the project are intended to uh, help all the football clubs that are uh, members of this consortium, but also other stakeholders, uh, other sports clubs and all the other interested sides and individuals involved in uh, sports to uh, support young talents because we cannot afford to, to, lose, to lose talents due to some challenges, uh, societal, uh, economic or po political or maybe climate. Uh, challenges as well. So basically we, we want to uh, create the platform for um, networking in the field of support to fewer opportunities, uh, sports persons and those that wish to have the career in, in sports. Uh, therefore we are creating the manual and the toolkit with practical guidelines that will be useful to uh, all those and these will be uh, available by the end of uh, this project. Another important feature of this project is that it uh, focuses on the fewer opportunities uh, youth, uh, meaning that uh, they are having um, many more difficulties in um, having the means to purchase the equipment, to um, invest into the logistics, especially if they have to travel from another city to, to Belgrade or to any other uh, city in the partner countries. And uh, especially those that were affected by the post-COVID uh, economic uh, influences 